So in this lecture we're going to go through uh, computing z-scores, t-scores, and percentile ranks. So in the example here, you know, if you answered 56 items correctly on an IQ test, how did you do? And your, your immediate answer without knowing the mean and the standard deviation is you say you're not sure. You don't know how you did. What z-scores allow us to do is to see immediately how, how it is that we did compared to other people. And so you see we've got the population mean, mu, is 46. Population standard deviation, or k sigma, is 10. So uh, for, for the number of items answered correctly on this particular IQ test. And so we could first figure out the, the z-score for how it is that you did on this IQ test. The formula for the z-score, x minus mu divided by standard deviation. Okay, X is your score, so in this case you scored a 56 minus 46, mu of the population mean, divided by 10, which is the population standard deviation, which gives us 10 divided by 10, which gives us 1. You scored one standard deviation above, um, above the mean on this, in essence. Whenever you get a positive number, for a z-score, you've scored above the mean. Whenever you get a negative number, you've scored below the mean. So this gives us a sense of how it is that we how it is that we did on this particular um, on this particular IQ test. Now you know that this isn't how your score would be reported to you, and the real reason why it isn't reported to you is purely psychological. People can't handle being told that they got a one on an IQ test. Now, um, when actually a 1 is a pretty good score, for a z-score of 1 would be a pretty good score, but we can't handle that psychologically. And so, uh, what we do is transform the score again. For IQ tests, they're transformed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So, if we take this formula and um, turn it around to give us a, a score for, for x, here, we'd have the, the mean plus z times the standard deviation. Okay? In our case, to figure out what your score would be then, uh, the mean is 100, right, on this transform distribution. Our z was 1 times our stand, the standard deviation of the transform distribution is 15. 100 plus 15, you would have scored 115 on this IQ test. We also, so, so this is one way in which we transform scores. Another one is with t-scores, is often what's seen. With t-scores, the mean is always 50, and the standard deviation is always 10. You can imagine why it's helpful to have a t-score, have a system to where we always know the mean is 50 and the standard deviation is 10. It's just like with the, with the z-scores, so we can get a sense of how it is that an individual has done on a, on a particular test. You'll see t-scores a lot with psychological inventories. So let's say if it was a self-esteem scale, and, the, and you scored a 33 on the self-esteem scale, and you don't know how it is that you did, and the, the counselor is meeting with you, or the psychologist is meeting with you, might not know how you did with that raw score. But um, if we created a z-score and then a t-score, they would end up knowing how it is that you, you did on this, this particular uh, self-esteem inventory. So if your self-esteem score was a 33, and we found out that the, the mean was 20, and the standard deviation was five uh, for the for a group of people who have taken the self-esteem inventory. We could first figure out your z-score. So 33 minus 20 divided by five. 13 divided by five, which would be 2.6 for your z-score. From there, we could figure out your. Uh, we could figure out a t-score, right? Because we mentioned before, we don't like to talk to people in interpreting the results in terms of z-scores because a 2.6 seems like a very low score. It's actually extraordinarily high. Um, but, but because it's a, within the z-distribution, 
um, it, it's more difficult to translate it for people. So remember for the t, the mean is always 50 and the standard deviation is always 10. So we put that into this formula here. We're going to figure out what the individual's t-score would be. So the mean is 50, z is 2.6 at times, excuse me, 10, put that parentheses in the wrong place, 50 plus 26, 76, right? 26 gives us 2.6 times 10, gives us 26. Their t-score ends up being 76. What I know is, uh, in what we know from this is it's over two and a half standard deviations above um, above the mean for the score. Any usually on these psychological inventories, any score, any T score that's 70 or above is considered clinically significant. That would be the case here as well for for this particular. Test.